effect is the production of a voltage difference which is called as a Hall voltage across an electrical conductor transfers to an electric current in the conductor and to an applied magnetic field which is perpendicular to the current. It was discovered by Edwin Hall in 1879. This Hall voltage or Hall effect becomes observable in a perpendicular applied magnetic field across voltage contacts that lie on the boundary of the void on either side of a line connecting the current contacts. It exhibits apparent sign reversal in comparison to the standard ordinary Hall effect in the simply connected specimen. And this Hall effect depends on the current injected from within the void. The Hall coefficient is defined as the ratio of the induced electric field to the product of the current density and the applied magnetic field. It is a characteristic of the material from which the conductor is made. Since its value depends on the type, number and properties of charge carriers that constitute the current. The Hall effect is due to the nature of the current in a conductor. Current consists of the movement of many small charge carriers, typically electrons, holes, ions or all these three. When a magnetic field is present, these charges experience a force called the Lorentz force. When such a magnetic field is absent, the charges follow approximately straight line of sight paths between collisions with the impurities, that is phonons, etc. Here please do not get confused between photon and phonon. A phonon is the quantum mechanical description of an elementary vibrational motion in which a lattice of atoms or molecules uniformly oscillates at a single frequency. Broadly speaking, phonon is a vibrational energy quantized in a packet. Phonons can be thought of as quantized sound waves similar to photons as quantized light waves. And the photon is a type of elementary particle. It is the quantum of the electromagnetic field including electromagnetic radiation such as light and radio waves. And the force carrier for the electromagnetic force, photons are massless and they always move at speed of light in vacuum. So this is the difference between photon and phonon. So don't get confused between these two. However, when a magnetic field with a perpendicular component is applied, their paths between collisions are curved, thus moving charges accumulate on one face of the material. This leaves equal and opposite charges exposed on the other face where there is a shortage of mobile charges. The result is an asymmetric distribution of charge density across the Hall element arising from a force that is perpendicular both the line of sight path and the applied magnetic field. The separation of charge establishes an electric field that opposes the migration of further charge so a steady electric potential is established for as long as the charge is flowing. Now let's see the explanation of Hall effect in which Hall effect for different directions of electric current and magnetic field is shown in this figure number 1. In this figure number 1 stands for electrons, 2 is Hall element, 3 is magnet, 4 is magnetic field and 5 is a power source. In drawing A, the Hall element takes on a negative charge at the top edge which is shown in blue color and the positive at the lower edge which is shown in the red color. In figure B and C, either the electric current or the magnetic field is reversed causing the polarization on reverse. Thereby the reversing both current and magnetic field which is drawing in figure D causes the Hall element to again assume a negative charge at the upper edge. Now consider a slab of conductor or semiconductor as shown in this figure number 2. In this figure let's consider small w is the width of the slab, small d is the thickness of the slab, capital I is the current flowing through the slab, small n charge concentration, small q charge on the carriers, 
small v subscript small d is the drift velocity of charge carriers capital a is the cross sectional area of the slab capital f subscript capital l is the force due to the magnetic field capital f subscript capital e is the force due to electric field and capital v subscript capital h is nothing but the hall voltage now let's see in this figure let the electric current is flowing through a slab of conductor or semiconductor along its length a magnetic field is applied to the slab perpendicular direction of the current flowing along its thickness due to the force of magnetic field that is the lorentz force the charge carriers are deflected towards opposite edges of the slab this generate electric field and develops potential difference across the edges of the slab that is along the width of the slab this electric field is perpendicular to the direction of flow of current and the magnetic field which is showed here in this diagram the hall effect is demonstrated in this animated figure hall effect is a generation of a transverse electric field in a solid material when it carries an electric current and is placed in a magnetic field that is perpendicular to the current which is i have already explained before charge carriers experiences a force known as lorentz force due to which charge carriers are deflected towards the edges of the slab the deflected charge carriers results rise in a hall voltage which is shown here in this animated figure now let's consider the cross sectional area of the semiconductor let's say capital a is equal to wd the current through the semiconductor capital i is equal to n q a v d hence vd that is the drift velocity is equal to i upon n q a let's say this is equation number 1 now let's see the force due to magnetic field due to current i electrons moving along the length of the solid when magnetic field of strength capital b is applied perpendicular along the thickness of the slab charge carriers experiences a force known as a lorentz force due to this lorentz force charge carriers are deflected towards the edges of the slab the magnitude of the force is given by capital f subscript capital l is equal to bqvd let's say this is equation number 2 charge carriers are now concentrated along the edges of the slab thus an electric field created along the edges of the slab let's say capital e subscript capital h now let's see the force due to electric field electric field developed across the edges of eh exerts an attractive force on the charge carriers it exerts a force on charge carriers in opposite direction force due to electric field on the charge carriers is given by fe is equal to qeh let's say this is equation number 3 under the equilibrium of forces due to magnetic and electric field charge carriers are under the influence of these two forces one force due to magnetic field that is fl and second due to the electric field that is fe both forces are in opposite direction under the equilibrium if magnitude of both forces is equal and net force on charge carrier is zero thus we can write fl is equal to fe now substituting the values from equation number 2 and equation number 3 we can write capital b into qvd is equal to q into eh therefore simplifying this equation we can write eh is equal to bvd let's say this is equation number 4 if vh is the potential difference generated along the width of the slab due to the electric field eh then we can write above equation eh is equal to vh upon w therefore putting the value of eh in equation number 4 we can write vh upon w is equal to b into vd by rearranging this equation we can write vh is equal to b into vd into w 
as we know that vd that is the drift velocity is equal to capital i that is the current divided by nqwd therefore the potential vh we can write vh is equal to b into i upon nqwd into w so by simplification of this equation we can write vh is equal to b i upon n q d let's say this is equation number for you therefore rearranging this equation we can try it v h is equal to 1 upon n q into b i upon d so simply rearranging these all parameters we have this equation number 6 therefore the quantity in this equation r h is equal to 1 upon n q this quantity is known as a Hall coefficient. Thus, Hall voltage is given by Vh is equal to Rh into Bi upon D. Let's say this is equation number 7. Hence, magnitude and the direction of Hall voltage is dependent on magnitude and direction of current and magnetic field. Also, Hall voltage is inversely proportional to the thickness of the slab, which is shown from equation number 7. Now, let's see the determination of type of semiconductor. The Hall voltage developed across the edges of the semiconductor is written as Vh is equal to Rh into Bi upon D, where Hall coefficient Rh is equal to, by rearranging above equation, we can write Rh is equal to Vh into D upon Bi. If the value of Rh is positive, then the type of semiconductor is P-type. Whereas if the Rh is negative, the type of semiconductor is N-type. So from this equation, we can easily determine the type of semiconductor. Next is determination of charge carrier concentration. If you want to determine the charge carrier concentration, the value of Hall coefficient is equal to Rh is equal to 1 upon Nq. Hence, charge carrier concentration that is a small n is equal to 1 upon Rh into Q. If the value of Rh is known, the charge carrier concentration can be found with the help of this equation. Now, let's see the determination of charge carrier mobility. The electrical conductivity is given by sigma is equal to nq mu, where mu is the mobility of charge carriers. Therefore, mu is equal to sigma upon nq. As we know that Rh is equal to 1 upon nq, hence above equation we can write mu is equal to sigma into Rh. Thus, the charge mobility can be determined using Hall coefficient using above equation. 